Wow. Welcome to Timely Word and Prayer. This is the seventh and last day of the 32nd week. This is day 224, the 224th day of the year. This is the seventh day. The seventh day is a day. You know, the seventh is a very significant season in, in the week. The seventh day is a very significant season in the week. This is a day of results. All that we've been doing within the week, this is when we get the results. When God commanded Israel to march around Jericho for seven days, it was on the seventh day. And after marching around the city, the seventh time on that seventh day, that's when the results came. So this is a day of results. A day of results. When Elisha told Elijah, I mean, Haman, Neman to dip into Jordan seven times for his healing. Nothing happened until he had done it the seventh time. He came out here because the seventh is the time of results. So this is a day of results. And I pray that your own positive results will come. I pray that you will see results. Uh, you will see joy. You will see a good harvest today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So this is a day of results. On the second day, on the seventh day of creation, God ended his work. God rested. God blessed the seventh day. No other day is blessed. God blessed the seventh day. And he sanctified it. These four things, God did it. He ended his work. He rested. He blessed the seventh day. And he sanctified it. So today, you remember all that as we step into the seventh day of the week. This is a day when God will end affliction. Something is ending today. Something is ending today. A project of the 32nd week is ending today. And I pray that you end, you, 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 you end this week with this note of victory that something is ending today. Amen. There will be no carryover in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to look at the, 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 the seventh prophetic division of the book of Jonah and see what God has in mind. Jonah chapter, Jonah chapter 4, the last section from verse 6, we're going to see results. We have seen Jonah rebel against God through this week. I've seen Jonah rebel against God, or Jonah received instruction from God. Jonah rebelled against God, and then God raised a storm against him. God raised a storm against him. And God allowed, after the storm, God handed Jonah. Jonah was thrown into the sea, and God prepared a fish that was swallowed him. A great fish swallowed him. And Jonah prayed in the belly of the fish, and God commanded the fish to vomit him. And as soon as uh, the fish vomited him, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time because the 32nd is a season of second chance. God gave me a second chance and then he, you know, God gave him the word to go to Nineveh and preach. And Jonah went to Nineveh and preached. And when he preached, the people repented. They believed him. They believed what he said and called for a fast. They believed that as Jonah said, that judgment was coming within 40 days. You know, 40 days from now, judgment, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people believed him. They didn't argue with him. And so the people fasted, animals, men fasted, and they cried to God, and God heard them, and God forgave Nineveh, because this is a season of forgiveness. This is a season of mercy. I pray that this will sink into your heart. This week is a week of mercy. This week is a week of forgiveness. Mm. And so, um, in so when Jonah saw that God had forgiven the people of Nineveh, Jonah became angry. Jonah became angry and said, no, 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 no. I, he, you know, he, God was rejoicing because there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. But now a whole city repented and Jonah is sad. Was that a messenger of God? Yeah, he was, but he was, he was 
he was walking for God without the heart of God. This is where it matters. Walking for God, but without the heart of God. Speaking for God without the heart of God. Representing God without the heart of God. Jonah was sad that the people had obeyed. He was sad that judgment did not come upon them. He was so disappointed. You know, sometimes, especially for those who speak for God, prophets, you know, God gives you a word that judgment is coming against the nation and you declare it and now you are waiting for the judgment to come so you can say, I said it. That's a trap that many prophets have. That The trap, it's, it comes, all of us, you know, all who speak for God, we always want to be able to say, I said it. Oh, Trump escapes assassination. I saw it, I said it. Oh, this person wins election. I said it. There's nothing wrong with I said it. Nothing wrong. It's okay to, you know, testify that God spoke through me and the word comes to pass. But we must be careful with that trap. Because there will be times when you say judgment is coming and judgment will not come. We ought to know. That God can change his mind for whatever reason. Jonah said, judgment will come on Nineveh within 40 days. Nothing happened because the people repented. And Jonah was angry. He felt humiliated. He said, what kind of, what, what would the people think about me? That I'm a prophet. I came and told them that judgment is coming and judgment didn't come. He felt, no. We are servants of God. God is the Lord. He's the master. He can choose to do. Yeah, this is what I see coming, but something else comes. Not that I lied, not that I'm a false prophet, but I must submit the prophecy to the one who gave it to me. We must. There are times when we speak and it doesn't go the way we said. Yeah, I said, but the Bible said that if a prophet speaks and it doesn't come to pass, then he's a false prophet and all that. It's more than that. It's more than that. <laughs> we need to keep hearing God. Abraham heard God say, tell him to go and kill Isaac. If that was all he heard, he would have killed Isaac, but he continued to hear God. And God said, because of, you know, don't kill Isaac. Abraham would say, you know, what if I have already believed this must be Satan? He would have killed Isaac. So we need to be careful as people who speak for God and who speak the word of God. It's important that we just don't have ability to speak for God. We need the heart of God. We need the heart of God. When we don't have the heart of God, we can become so judgmental and so critical and always wishing for the bad, the negative to happen. So we can say, I said it. God has no interest in the death of a sinner. No, he has no interest. He's abundant in mercy. He's full of compassion. He's slow to anger. And Jonah needed to learn that lesson. So let's see something happen in... In the seventh prophetic division, Jonah, Jonah, we go to verse 6, Jonah chapter 4, verse 6. And um, because of this attitude of Jonah, and the Lord God prepared a plant and made it come up over Jonah. You know, Jonah had gone under a shed. God said, no, 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 I'm going to prepare a shed for you. And made it come over Jonah that it might shed him, shed, it be shed for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. God just raised the plant and he gave him shade. And Jonah said, mm, thank you, Lord. It's so good. Thank you. <laughs> but as morning dawned, the next day, God prepared a worm and it so damaged the plant that it withered. God is behind everything. God Raise the plant. God also prepared the worm. <laughs> uh, 
and it's so damaging. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind. God is at work. He prepared the plant. He prepared the storm. Now he's preparing an east wind. And the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? Why are you angry that the plant died? Why are you angry that the plant died? And he said, it is right for me to be angry, even angry to death. But the Lord said, you had pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made to grow. A plant that came up in a night and perished in a, in a night. And should, did not, should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and much livestock. God was only trying to teach Jonah a lesson. And that's what God does. He just, you know, he just allows certain things to happen so that what he wants to teach us can sink. He saw that Jonah has such a poor attitude. Jonah's, Jonah's heart was so far removed, separated from his heart. Jonah could not think the way he wanted. So he said, I'm going to give Jonah a lesson. I'm going to teach Jonah something. So while Jonah was still mad and boiling with anger, you know, and the sun just rose. And Jonah was looking for a way to cover himself. And God said, no way, no problem, I'm going to help you. God prepared a plant, allowed a plant to just grow up, blows up. You know, God can do something. He made Aaron's rod to board overnight and produce fruit overnight. So God now gave Jonah overnight plant. This plant just go, pa, 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 just grew up and gave Jonah a covering. Oh, Jonah said, this is wonderful. I so like this. Oh, God is good. God is good. And while he was saying God is good, God is good, God prepared a worm and it ate the plant, damaged it. Why was he doing it? To teach Jonah a vital lesson. God specializes in using things around us to teach us. I pray that you will not ignore the lessons that God has planted around this week. God wants to change you. Because that's what's important. The transformation we have in this season. This is a week of changing people. Remember... Jacob was praying, bless me, bless me, bless me. God said, what is your name? He said, I'm Jacob. He said, you will no longer be Jacob. I need to change you from inside. I pray that this week you will experience transformation from inside. That the encounter, you will have an encounter with God this week that will change you. That's all. So God changed Jacob. And now God is trying to change Jonah. Not by teaching him anything with words, just, you know, prepare this plant. And then he died. Then a wind came and blew everything. And Jonah felt bad. Look at this plant that has been helping me now. Now the plant is gone. And God said, wait a minute, Jonah. Are you angry that the plant died? Why? Yeah, I have to be angry. Why would the plant die? God said to Jonah, what's your business? You didn't plant this thing. And now you have pity on a plant that you don't know how it grew. And you don't want me to pity a nation of 120,000 people plus their animals. You want me to destroy everything. You are sad that one plant is destroyed. That's where the story ended. And I believe that Jonah learned the lesson. I pray that this week will be a week of changing from inside. 
God had to change Jacob's name to really bless him. That in the prayer we pray today, the things we desire today, I pray that God will lead us to have encounters that will change us from inside. That's what this week is about. And I pray that you will experience a transformation in the way you see things, in the way you think, in the way you work, in the way you do everything, that you will experience a transformation from inside in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I encourage you once again to share this message. Share it. This, the, the message, the messages of this, that the second week have been so, you know, so rich. Bless my heart. And I want you to share this with people so that others can also share in the blessing that we have received. The Lord bless you. I pray that this seventh week, you will receive the blessings of the seventh week. You will see the results of the seventh week. You will see the blessings. You will see the intervention of the seventh week. And above all, I pray that God will use you to intervene in the lives and in the hearts of others. In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless you. Amen.